was the beginning of night when Olge asked her why she hadn't let herself be fucked. She knew that O wanted desperately to fuck. O thought about this question. She decided that she must be a victim, though she had never before thought that she was a victim. A victim of her society's definition of women or her age. These women, according to the society, no longer sexually desirable to men, except perhaps as prostitutes. More important, they no longer possess sexuality. Oh, realize that the women who were two or three generations younger than her were far more intelligent about these problems than the women her age. Now night had come to the dead city. Oh, found herself in the middle of one of these great streets. She was walking down this middle, as if she was a car or a motorcycle. Somewhere in her, only that it was dangerous for her to act like a motorcycle. She thought that the middle lane, the one whose middle she was in, was going to disappear. So just as it did, just as became one of the other lanes, oh, swerved into the right lane. Safely, she reached the bottom. There, Olge was waiting for her, though O hadn't expected to see her friend ever again in the deserted city. Stay with me. There had been a previous arrangement between O and a man whose name she didn't know up to meet at this very hour in the Tenderloin district. O remained. The two women were already waiting. O was upset that she was missing her appointment with an older man, but she couldn't be worried about that because she had to do something about the blood. She wasn't wearing anything, so at any moment, blood was going to seep through her clothes into the outside. She remembered there was a pharmacy on the corner, down the street from the department store, where she had planned to meet the man whose name she did. Instead of walking toward this department store, Angenot moved in the other direction, across the principal street that crossed the one down which O had been running, into the darkest, most deserted part of the burnt down city. This was where the artists were. In the gigantic pharmacy that was situated in this district, O was looking up at a glass countertop that was far above her. She saw a pile of Tapex. The Tapex was Indian because it was wrapped in only the thinnest and cheapest colorless paper. The covering in spots was torn. Since O couldn't buy the Tapex because she thought that it might be diseased, she asked the woman behind the glass counter if the pharmacy had anything else for periods. An emaciated blonde pointed to wood shells that were so high that their tops and bottoms had disappeared. They stood behind O. On one of the higher shelves lay a jumbo box of Kotex. Pads so huge, they must have been designed for elephants. You see, O, uh, the sales girl said, you could have gotten fucked even though you had your period. Everything about the restaurant to which the older man took O spoke of wealth and the upper classes. The man turned out to be a professor whom O had once met, one of the most respected teachers in the country and a novelist. Unlike the other ones who had fucked her in the recent past, whom she could remember, this man treated her gently and with respect. It was toward the end of their meal that he pulled her toward him across a red leather couch on which they were still sitting. The hands that were holding her head pushed her head down to where she saw a coat that wasn't human, that was small, very pointed at the end, a ring of flesh around its middle, white rather than red, like a cat's. Open her mouth around it. She didn't think that anyone in the restaurant, especially their waiter, was noticing the disappearance or the head beneath the white cloth covered tabletop down in the middle of the lake. When everything was over, 
She raised her head and saw that the man had changed. He was smiling angelically. The hair on his head, once scanty and white, was now very thick, black, and afro, like what white lip gloss once wore. She realized that having had the sex, during which she had never lost consciousness, made her look easy. Such sex was in Whereas the sex during the sex show had sent her over every edge, over every possible edge, over herself, flying, until all that was left was sky. During this loss of her sex,